Hey, what's up? Stephanie, the English coach here from EnglishFullTime.com. Today, I have got such a fun video for you. We are going to analyze an episode of Friends, different clips from the episode, in order to study and learn fast, connected speech that native speakers use in real everyday life to improve your listening skills and your speaking skills. We're just gonna jump right into it. The way this is gonna work is I'm gonna show you the clip and then we're going to break it down and I'm gonna analyze different parts of it. So in this episode, Chandler and Rachel find a cheesecake that belongs to their neighbor. Basically it was delivered to the wrong address. They eat it and then there's this whole thing with the cheesecake throughout the entire episode where you know they, they love this cheesecake, they end up eating and or stealing another one. Uh, and so we're just we're just gonna roll with it. You're gonna see clips about a cheesecake, basically. Okay, so here's the first one. Hi. Hey, you have got to try this cheesecake. Oh, you know, I'm not that much of a sweet no. tooth. Oh, wow, my God, so creamy. Oh. <laughs> okay, so Chandler says, you have got to try this cheesecake. And there's a few things I want to talk to you about here. First, you have. Notice that the H is almost undetectable. You have got to try this cheesecake. You have got to try, you have got. And why does this happen? This happens because of the stress in the sentence, the rhythm of the sentence. So you is stressed, you, you have, you have, and have, that ah sound, it gets reduced to you have, have, have. You have got, got to try, and now we have to try, not to try, to try, to try. You have got to try this cheesecake, okay? And this cheesecake, do you see how he puts emphasis on those words? This cheesecake, you have got to try this cheesecake. Rachel says, you know, I'm not that much of a sweet tooth. You know, you know, not you know, yeah, yeah. You know, you know, I'm not that much of a sweet tooth. Oh, you know, I'm not that much of a sweet no. tooth. And then much of a is ma cha va ma cha va much of a much of a much of a and then she says wow so creamy it's so creamy so creamy she cuts off the i sound of it's so creamy let's listen to this clip again with all of these things in mind hey you have got to try this cheesecake oh you know i'm not that much of a sweet no. tooth I Wow, my God, so creamy. Oh. <laughs> By the way, I forgot to let you know earlier in this video that I created a really helpful document cheat sheet that you can download that has everything we're going over in this video. The dialogue from the clips, as well as all of the reductions we're focusing on, the connected speech, etc. So you should download that and follow along. It'll be so much easier. You don't have to take all these notes by hand. You can just print this out and then you can write directly on the document. Okay, let's take a look at the next clip. Oh my God, that is the best cheesecake I've ever had. Where did you get this? It was at the front door when I got home. Somebody sent it to us. <laughs> Rachel says, oh my God, that is the best cheesecake I've ever had. Where did you get this, right? I wanna draw your attention to that is what's happening to the T here? Because she says, that is the best cheesecake I've ever had, right? That is, that is, that is. Oh my God, that is the best cheesecake I've ever had. That T at the end of that is turning into a flap. And she's saying, that is, that is. The T in English, if you don't already know this, there are like 10 different ways to pronounce the T in English, okay? This is a letter that really confuses English students because they see it and they think the T makes the T sound, but it does not always make the T sound. And this is one of those cases. Hey, okay, big announcement. If you love studying American pronunciation with me and if you dream of speaking English as clearly and confidently as you speak your native language, then listen up. My Accent Freedom Program is now open for enrollment for a limited time only. With the Accent Freedom Program, you will learn to speak clear, confident English with correct pronunciation and a beautiful accent. I will teach you the secrets of American English from the sounds and rhythm you need for clear pronunciation to the connected speech and intonation patterns that will help you speak more fluently and effortlessly than ever before. 
This is a 12-week program that gives you step-by-step -step lessons, weekly homework, a supportive learning community, and feedback from real teachers who can answer all your questions. With our flexible online learning platform, you will have the freedom to learn anywhere, at any time, and on your own schedule, while being 100% supported the entire way. With the Accent Freedom Program, so much is possible. Finally, you can get control of the way you sound in English. You can overcome any speaking anxiety that has been holding you back for years, and you can step into your full potential as a confident, compelling, and unstoppable English speaker. So, if you're ready to finally feel comfortable speaking around native speakers, if you're ready to say yes to all the best opportunities, and if you're ready to truly find your voice in English, then I know you will absolutely love everything that is waiting for you in our Accent Freedom program. Use the link below in the description box to get all the details, and please do not hesitate to send me an email if you have any questions. Again, registration for the Accent Freedom program is now open and it will only be open for a very limited time. Okay, that's it, back to the video. Okay, next, Rachel says, where did you get this? Where did you get this? So look at what happens here. We're using a flap, again, we can use a flap for the T or the D. She says, where did, where did, where did, where did, okay, where did, and then she says, Jew, Jew. We have the D, and then we have the Y, and sometimes when we connect them, instead of creating the D Y sound, it creates a J J sound. So she could have said, where did you, where did you get this? But she doesn't. She says, where did you, where did you, where did you get this? Where did you get this? Now let's look at get this. Here we have a T that is both a glottal stop and a held T. She says, get this. So she doesn't say get this. She says get this. So try that, get this. Where did you get this? Where did you get this? It's like you hear a little pause in between get and this. Where did you get this? And then of course Chandler says, it was at the front door when I got home, somebody sent it to us. <laughs> it was at the front door. It was at, it was at the front door when I got home, when I got home, when I got home. And then he says, somebody sent it to us. And here, of course, he's lying. And that's why he's speaking so fast. And that's supposed to be the humor of it all. And I want to point out this T. <laughs> wow, we have a lot of T's in this lesson. He says, somebody sent, right? Sent. He doesn't say sent. He says, sent it, sent it. Because the T in American English, after an N, sometimes disappears. Sometimes we just drop it, like in the word internet. I often don't say internet. I say inner, internet, internet, or the center of something. I might say the center or the center, the center. Okay, so a T after an N sometimes just disappears. So he says, somebody sent it to us, sent it to us. Somebody sent it to us. When you're listening to TV shows and you're going, oh my gosh, I didn't hear the thing I was supposed to hear, realize that maybe it's because that thing is not there, <laughs> right? I've had students, actually, this is so crazy. One of my students in our Accent Freedom program, I think it was the very first round, she confessed to me and to everybody that one time she got her ears checked because she was so distraught over the fact that she could not understand TV shows or she was like expecting sounds to be there that just weren't there. And she thought something was wrong with her hearing. And the thing is, it's often not you. It's just the way the language is spoken. But maybe you've never been taught that this is what people are doing. So you're expecting the language to be a certain way when you hear it, but it's not. And that's confusing. So anyhow, I'm glad all of these T examples are coming up in this lesson because now you can realize like, hey, you can trust your ears more is what I'm trying to say than what you're probably trusting them at this moment. Okay, let's look at the next clip. I feel terrible. I'm a horrible, horrible, horrible person. Well, I'm sorry, what? All right, so here Chandler says, I feel terrible. I am a horrible, horrible, horrible person. And the reason why I wanted to share this clip, it's actually not about the connected speech, which is, you know, what we're focusing on in this lesson. It's about the way he says horrible. <laughs> because in my accent, I would say, I am a horrible, horrible, horrible person. But he doesn't say whore, he says har. I am a horrible, horrible, horrible person. I'm a horrible, horrible, horrible person. This is simply to point out that even native speakers, even from the same country, speak 
differently. Okay. So there's not one right way to speak. And this is something we talk about in the accent freedom program extensively and actually show you how to do it. You can build your own unique accent. You can learn what is sort of acceptable and correct and what, you know, what people will expect from an English speaker, what sounds they will expect. And then you can learn how to play with them and sound the way you want to sound. And also I'm teaching this because I just want you to be aware that things are said differently. And again, there's not one right way to say something. You can play around with it. So Chandler says horrible, horrible, horrible. And I say horrible, horrible. So he says har and I say whore. I say whore, that's funny. Okay, sorry. <laughs> Moving on, let's watch the next clip. You know what? Forget it. We are just hungry. We have not had lunch. We are just lightheaded. So let us go out and have lunch and forget about the cheesecake. Yeah, we'll drop it off downstairs so that we're not tempted. Good idea. Where do you want to go to lunch? Mama's Little Bakery, Chicago, Illinois. So Chandler says, you know what? Forget it. We are just hungry. We have not had lunch. We are just lightheaded. So let us go out and have lunch and forget about the cheesecake. Rachel says, yeah, we'll drop it off downstairs so we're not tempted. He says, good idea. Where do you wanna to go to lunch? Okay, so we have a lot of little things to break down here. First of all, let's just look quickly at the way he's emphasizing words. I'm sure you've heard that in English, we contract words together a lot. Like we are can get contracted to were, let us, that can be let's. Usually when we're not emphasizing these word pairs, we just contract them and we say them together. Like instead of saying let us, we say let's. Instead of saying we are, we say were. But here he is separating them. Why is he separating them? Because he's emphasizing what he's saying in the sentence. Okay, he's being a little bit more dramatic. He's saying, we are just hungry. That's a lot different from just saying, we're just hungry. We're just hungry. No, he's like, we are just hungry. We have not had lunch. We are just lightheaded. So let us go out, right? He could have said, so let's go out, but that's more casual. That's like, there's no emphasis there. So he's separating all his words and he's saying them individually to create that emphasis and to communicate his ideas the way he wants to communicate them. And the reason why I want to bring your attention to this is because when you hear an English rule like, oh, native speakers, they use contractions. I don't want you to think like we always use contractions and you have to always use contractions because there are no hard, fast rules in communication. There are things people have tendencies to do, right? Like we have a tendency to contract our words, but sometimes if we're wanting to emphasize something or be a little bit more dramatic when we speak, we might pull all of those contractions apart and say every single word. So just be aware of that. And again, feel that freedom to play around with the language when you are communicating and don't feel like, oh, native speakers do this. So I have to do it like this. Okay. All right. So let's look at forget it. When you read this word, you read for get it, right? You think that T is a strong T. It's not. It's forget it, edit, edit, edit. It's a flap. Forget it. So we have two T's. One is a flap and one is a glottal stop. Forget it. Forget it. And then I'm not saying for, I'm saying fur, fur. Forget it. Forget it. Forget it. And then later on when he says, so let us go out and have lunch and forget about the cheesecake, right? He's creating those little pauses. And there again, he says, forget forget and forget about the cheesecake. So you should practice this script, like print it out, highlight these little things, see what your mouth has a tendency to want to pronounce, like how it wants to pronounce, and then try to pronounce these words the way that I'm showing you and see if you can work on that to make it feel and sound more natural. Okay, then when Rachel says, yeah, and we'll drop it off downstairs, I want to zoom in your attention to this wool, okay? It's we will, it's contracted to wheel, but we don't usually say wheel. We say wool, wool, okay? But we say it so quickly because we're not focusing on that word in the sentence. We're gonna stress whatever comes after it, right? So she says, yeah, and we'll drop it off, drop it off, drop it off. Yeah, and we'll, and we'll, and we'll see it goes by really fast. We're not saying wheel, we're saying wool. Yeah, and we'll drop it off, we'll drop it off downstairs so that we're not tempted. And that were, we are becomes we're, but again, in fast connected speech, it reduces down to were. Like, where were they, right? Where were they? Yeah, and we'll drop it off downstairs, drop it off downstairs so that we're not tempted. We're, 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 we're not tempted. Yeah, and we'll drop it off downstairs so that we're not tempted. Then Chandler says, where do you want to go to lunch? Where do you want to go to lunch? Now see how fast 
He said that, right? Because everything's connected. Yeah, where do you want to go to lunch? It's not where do you want to go to lunch. If you try to speak and say everything so perfectly like that, it's going to be really hard to get it out of your mouth quickly. Let me try. Where do you want to go to, to lunch? <laughs> I can't do it. Where do you want to go to lunch? Like it just doesn't sound or feel natural. We reduce a lot of the sounds to uh, 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 the schwa, uh, okay? Where to, where to, where do you, where do you? Where do you, where do you, where do you say instead of where do you, we say where do you, where do you, where do you, where do you, where do you wanna instead of want to, we say wanna and then go to, go to lunch. Where do you want to go to lunch? Where do you want to go to lunch? Where do you want to go to lunch? Practice saying that because your tongue, in order to say it like that, your tongue has to be very relaxed in your mouth because it's going. So where do you want to go to lunch? We can also slow it down too if that feels too fast. So where do you want to go to lunch? Where do you want to go to lunch? Where do you want to go to lunch? Say it slower if that gives you more control. And then as you get better, you can say it faster, but do not sacrifice clarity for speed. Okay. This means make sure you're clear. Don't try to go fast. If you're still losing your clarity, you can use this rhythm and intonation, uh, the, where do you want to go to lunch, but you can slow down the speed. You will still sound natural, uh, but you'll maintain your clarity. Okay. Let's take a look at the next clip. Well, thank you for lunch. What? Wait a minute. I didn't pay. I thought you paid. So apparently we just don't pay for food anymore. <laughs> so here Chandler says, well, thank you for lunch. Rachel says, what? Wait a minute. I didn't pay. I thought you paid. And then Chandler says, so apparently we just don't pay for food anymore. Okay. So let's look at a few things here. Chandler says, thank you for lunch. For, for lunch is getting reduced down to fur, fur. Okay. But if I just say fur by itself like that, it sounds weird. Well, thank you for lunch. That's the way that we say the word in connected speech. Thank you for lunch. Thank you for lunch. Try that. Thank you for lunch. And then Rachel says, what? Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Wait a Wait a, wait a. So that T again is becoming a flap. Wait a, wait a, wait a, wait a minute, wait a minute. And there again, glottal stop, minute, minute. I'm not even bringing my, my tongue up for the T. I'm not bringing the tongue up. I'm leaving it down. Wait a minute, because we can stop the T in the back of the throat and use a glottal stop. And it still sounds perfectly normal. We don't have to say, wait a minute. You don't have to release that T at the end. Then she says, I didn't pay. I didn't pay. Okay. What's happening here? I didn't, didn't. She's using what's called a syllabic N here. It's an N sound that is taking up an entire syllable and there's no T at the end. It's a held T. So the T where your tongue is up, but you're not releasing it. I didn't, didn't, didn't. So the D, the second D is combining with the N and then the T is also there combined, but it's held, okay? And she's saying, I didn't pay, I didn't pay. So try that, I didn't pay, 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 I thought you paid, I thought you paid. You can also try imitating the intonation patterns that you're hearing here, right? It's not, I thought you paid, I thought you paid, it's, I thought you paid. I thought you paid. Okay. So practice doing the intonation along with the pronunciation. And then Chandler says, so apparently we just don't pay for food anymore. Okay. So apparently we just don't pay, don't pay, don't pay for food anymore. Great. Now let's watch the next clip. Do you see what I see? <gasps> it's still there. <laughs> Mrs. Braverman must be out. <laughs> she could be out of town. Maybe she'll be gone for months. So Chandler says, do you see what I see? It's still there. Mrs. Braverman must be out. Rachel says she could be out of town. Maybe she'll be gone for months. Okay, so we have a few things to go over here. Do you see what I see? Do you see what I see? Do you, do you, do you see what I see? What I, what I, again, flat for the T. What I becomes what I, what I. When you start using the flap regularly for the T's in your English, that will naturally just speed up your English because the flap sound is a fast sound. You cannot make a slow flap. It is impossible. It is simply a fast sound. So when you start using the flap, you will naturally start speaking English at a faster rate. Do you see what I see? Do you see what I see? Do you see? Do you see? Do you see? 
what I see, what I see. Do you see what I see? It's still there. It's still there. Now look at how these S's were combined. It's still there. When you combine two letters, like if one word ends with a letter and the next word starts with that same letter, you can often join those two sounds together. You just have to say it a little bit longer, usually, so that it sounds like the, the letter is still there. So they're saying it's still there. You just draw out that S a tiny, tiny bit. It's still there. It's still there. Because if you don't do it correctly, it will sound like it's still there. It's still there. And we don't want to say it's still there. You want to say it's still there. It's still there. So you have to hold on to that S. You don't have to say it's still there. Okay. You don't have to create a pause. Just join the S's, make it a little bit longer, and you will be able to connect your words and still sound natural. Because again, if you accidentally say it still there, it's going to sound like you have made a grammatical mistake. Next, when Rachel says she could be out of town, this is out of, out of, but she's not pronouncing it like that. She's saying at a, at a, at a. She could be out of town, out of town, out of town. Yeah, he's out of town. She's out of town. I'm going to go and I'm going to be out of town. <laughs> so out of town, out of, again, flap. There's a flap there, out of town. And then she says, maybe she'll be gone. She'll, she will becomes she'll, she'll. Maybe she'll be gone for months, months. Now here with months, she's not pronouncing the T-H. She's just saying months, months. Maybe she'll be gone for months. This is very, very common. She could be out of town. Maybe she'll be gone for months. Okay, next clip. <laughs> the cheesecake without me. Oh, what are you gonna do? Are you gonna go run and tell Monica? Are you gonna tell Joey? No, because then you're gonna have to tell them what we did. We are dessert stealers. We are living outside of the law. Okay, so here Chandler says, how can you eat the cheesecake without me? Rachel says, oh, what are you gonna do? Are you gonna go run and tell Monica? Gonna tell Joey? No, because then you're gonna have to tell them what we did. We are dessert stealers. We are living outside of the law. <laughs> Chandler, when he says, how can you eat the cheesecake without me? Okay, look at that can. A lot of students have trouble with this word can, can, right? Because they're not actually hearing that when we speak, they're hearing something else. What are they hearing? In this case, we're reducing it down to can, can, can. So K N. think of it like that. How can, how can. Rachel says, oh, what are you gonna do? What are, okay? What are, again, there's a flap there. What are you, you, you gonna do, gonna do, gonna do. You're gonna go run, tell Monica. You're gonna go run, tell Monica. You're gonna go run, tell Monica. Gonna tell Joey, gonna, gonna tell Joey. What are you gonna do? You're gonna go run, tell Monica, gonna tell Joey. And then later she says, no, because then you're gonna have to, gonna have to. Going to have to becomes gonna have to, gonna have to. Okay, now let's look at the next clip. No, we're gonna split it. You take half and I take half. Well, that's not fair. You've already had some. Rachel says, no, we're gonna split it. You take half and I take half. Chandler says, well, that's not fair. You've already had some. So here, split it, split it. Again, we have a flap for the T. Split it, split it, split it. Then you take half and I take half. Here we have a syllabic N for the and. You take half and I take half. Mm, mm. She's not saying and fully. She's not saying you take half and I take half. It's you take half and I take half. Half and I, half and I, half and I, half and I, okay? You take half and I take half. And notice on half that the L is silent. It's not half, okay? It's half, half. Next clip, let's take a look. What do we use to split it? Okay. <laughs> Chandler says, what do we use to split it? What do we use to split it? What do we, what do we, what do we, what a, what a, what do we use to, to split it, split it, split it. What do we use to split it? Next clip. All right, pick a half. Okay, well, this side looks bigger. Rachel says, all right, pick a half. Chandler says, okay, well, this side looks bigger. Let's look at this. Pick a half. Pick a half. See how the words are joined together with their syllables? Pick a half. Pick a half. Pick a half. And of course, that A, it's not pick a half. It's pick a, pick a, pick a half. And then Chandler says, okay, well, this side looks bigger. Again, we have two S's getting joined. This side, this side, he's not saying this 
side. He's saying, this side, this side looks bigger. Okay, next clip. Okay, there you go. Enjoy your half, my friend, but that is it. No sharing, no switching, and don't come crying to me if you eat your piece too fast. <laughs> Rachel says, okay, there you go. Enjoy your half, my friend, but that is it. No sharing, no switching, and don't come crying to me if you eat your piece too fast. Okay, so there's a few things here. Enjoy, that eh sound is getting reduced to an i eh sound. Enjoy, enjoy, like they went in the house in. Enjoy your half, my friend. Okay. I think intonation is really, really fun to imitate. So I really, when you're practicing this, I really want you to try and do it and read it and say it like they say it. Enjoy your half, my friend, but that is it. No sharing, no switching, and don't come crying to me if you eat your piece too fast. So when you're imitating, you want to match the intonation, the up and down, the melody of how the speakers are speaking, but you also want to pay attention to the rhythm and the length of the words. And it's like a, a call and response. Like you want to hear something and then repeat it exactly. It's kind of like music in that way. If you sing a song, you're singing it with the melody of the actual song and with the length of the words and everything so that it sounds like the song. And that's how people can sing a song and other people can recognize the song. I don't know why I did this. It's not a phone call. <laughs> Anyways, you want to think of uh, language in the same way, right? That's why when I say this, no sharing, no switching, and don't come crying to me, it sounds the way Rachel made it sound because I'm making my voice go up and down the way she did it. And I'm lengthening words the way she did it and shortening words the way she did it. And I'm using the same sounds. So don't come crying to me. She, she didn't say, don't come crying to me. Don't come crying to me. She said, don't come crying to me, right? If you eat your piece too fast. She didn't say, if you eat your piece too fast. If you eat your piece too fast. That's different. That's a different pattern. So think of language as patterns and then try to imitate the pattern. And that is how you will sound the way they sound in the clips. Anyhow, this is just a really good exercise to train your mouth, the sounds, the connections, intonation, all of that. Okay, anyways, going back to what I was teaching you, she said, if you eat your piece too fast, your piece, your piece, she didn't say your, she said your, your, your. Oh, she says that for your half too. Enjoy your half, my friend. And if you eat your piece too fast, so she uses the your both times and that's common. We commonly reduce your down to your. And then let's look at that is it. She says, that is it, that is it, that is, that is it, right? So again, there's a flap there. That is it, my friend. That is it. Okay, let's look at the next clip. Oh! <laughs> All right, you gotta give me some of your piece. Oh, 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 oh no, no. No switching, no sharing. Don't come crying to me. <laughs> okay, so Rachel says, All right, you gonna give me some of your piece? Wow, that was fast, right? You gonna give me some of your piece? So you gonna, you gonna give me, give me some of your, some of your piece? You gonna give me some of your piece? All right, you gonna give me some of your piece? The R there is implied, because if we wrote this down in a grammatically correct way, it should be, are you gonna give me some of your piece? But sometimes we drop off words when what we're going to say is understandable even without the word. So she says, all right, you gonna give me some of your piece? You gonna, you gonna, you gonna give me, give me, give me some, 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 some your piece, your piece, your piece. And Chandler says, oh no, no, no switching, no sharing, and don't come crying to me. So he's, you know, using, he's imitating her and the way she said what she said previously to him. Okay, so let's look at the final clip. Oh, yay, hey, look, there's a piece that doesn't have floor on it. <laughs> Stick to your side. Come on now. <laughs> All right, what are we having? <laughs> All right, so Rachel says, oh yay, look, there's a piece that doesn't have floor on it. And Chandler says, stick to your side. Rachel says, come on now. And then Joey comes and he's like, all right, what are we having? Okay, so here, 
Let's look at stick to your side, right? So we have stick to, stick to, not stick to your, it's stick to your, stick to your side, stick to your side. And then Joey, he says, all right, what are we having? What are we having? Now, a couple things here. Having usually has a G at the end, but ing words frequently in English, they can have their G dropped. <laughs> and in some accents, people do this more than in other accents. So he says, what are we having? Then I want to point out that he says, what a, what a, what are we having? What are we having? Right? So for what are we having? He says, all right, what are we having? What are we having? Okay. So that is it. I hope you enjoyed this lesson. I've actually never done a lesson like this on my channel before where I use clips from an actual TV show. So I need to know, I need to, need to, I need to know if this is interesting and helpful for you. If you learned something. So please, if you learned something in this video, go ahead and click that like button because I will keep an eye on that and I will see how many people like this video. Let me know in the comments if you want more videos like this. Tell me what you learned. If you found this interesting, fascinating, too long, too drawn out. If you have feedback and suggestions for me, I am all ears. Please share them with me. And again, if you want to work on your pronunciation and your spoken English with me, registration for my Accent Freedom course opens on June 8th. So get on my email list as soon as possible so you do not miss the enrollment dates. You can sign up at englishfulltime.com. Also, do not forget to download the cheat sheet and study guide that goes along with this video so you can see all of my notes about how to do these reductions and what to pay attention to. All right, that's it. And I can't wait to see you in another video. Bye.